President Trump proposed an overhaul of the U.S. tax code affecting millions of Americans. Yeah, but his plan is already falling short in one major area. Details, it seems. KCLINE's political reporter Dave Bryan takes a closer look at the tax proposal, the potential winners and losers that occurred today. Now, the Democrats say the loser will be the deficit, which they say could spiral out of control if, if things work a, a, you know, a particular way. Right now, it appears businesses would be doing well in terms of winners with the top business tax rate cut by more than half. And family taxpayers, especially the wealthiest among us, could benefit as well with the highest tax rate dropping significantly from nearly 40 percent, reduced to a cap of 35 percent, and elimination of the estate tax and the alternative minimum tax. The Trump administration is tackling one of the most volatile issues on the president's 100-day agenda, tax reform. Under the Trump plan, we will have a massive tax cut for businesses and massive tax reform and simplification. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin and National Economic Director Gary Cohn laid out Trump's vision for tax policy. Reducing the corporate tax rate from 35 to 15 percent would be the biggest tax cut in U.S. history, Mnuchin claims. Steve McHugh, owner of the Express Gun Locker in the Inland Empire, says that works for him. I, I believe it's win-win. There's absolutely no downside. When you, when you, when you limit an employer's tax liability, they can increase everything around their business to make everybody more money, including their employees. In addition to slashing the top tax rates for business to 15 percent, the White House says the plan also includes tax relief for middle income families, lowering individual income tax rates and reducing the number of tax brackets. By taking the current seven tax brackets we have today and reducing them to only three brackets, a 10 percent bracket, a 25% bracket and a 35% bracket. And doubling the standard deduction. But on the other hand... We are going to eliminate on the personal side all tax deductions other than mortgage interest and charitable deductions. And the Treasury Secretary insists the tax reform plan will be revenue neutral. This will pay for itself with growth and with reduced reduction of of different deductions and closing loopholes. But one of the country's leading economists, LA-based Christopher Thornburg, founder of Beacon Economics, told me filling the tax cut government funding void will not be so easy for President Trump. From a revenue neutrality standpoint, this thing's not going to work. He's talking about slicing an enormous amount out of the federal government revenue stream. They'll go to, of course, is this idea that tax cuts will give us an enormous surge of growth and that'll make it pay for itself. That was uh, viewed largely as in a joke in the 80s and it failed miserably. Now here we are 25 years later and like a vampire this preposterous idea is re-emerging from the grave. The Republican Speaker of the House who has not always been enthusiastic about all of President Trump's initiatives seemed to embrace at least the general principles of the tax reform plan pending of course the specifics. We've been briefed on what they're going to do and it's basically along exactly the same lines that we want to go. So what we see this is progress being made showing that we're moving and getting on the same page. While Democrats, not too surprisingly, are somewhat less than completely thrilled with what they heard. We'll take a look at what they're proposing. But I can tell you this, if the president's plan is to give a massive tax break to the very wealthy in this country, a plan that will mostly benefit people and businesses like President Trump's, that won't put pass muster with we Democrats. Now, keep in mind that what was released today was really a bare bones outline with a lot of headlines, but plenty of blank space where the details will go. Clearly, this was an effort by President Trump to show his supporters that he has done something on tax reform before his 100th day in office. And, you know, that's coming up pretty quickly. Well, yes. In fact, uh, we know that Congress only has, what, a couple more days to pass the emergency right. spending bill to avoid this government shutdown on Saturday. Where do we stand now? Does it look like we're going to have a shutdown? Or could that be avoided? I think it's unlikely. 
But, you know, the situation these days, anything is possible in Washington, including a government shutdown on President Trump's 100th day in office. But Reuters reports tonight the House may consider a bill to fund the government for just one week to avoid such a shutdown and buy time to strike a deal for a long-term funding plan. That report quotes a Republican source who said a short-term, one-week bill would give the lawmakers a little breathing room to complete a broader, more comprehensive spending bill. Reuters says Democrats indicate they would be okay with the one-week extension if they felt they were close to getting an, an agreement on the longer-term spending bill. So we'll have to see. Jeff, uh, Lena, that's the way things look right now. Okay, Dave, thank you so much.